let's move on by discussing IPv4 configuration and various network settings. So, we need to cover how the system sets up networking for its interface or interfaces. And to do so, we'll take you to the shell. Let's close one of these extra shells and navigate to the shell here. We'll focus on our local system, so let's close the window to the remote host and give you a sense for how the system boots up and provides networking services. So the system comes up in a multi-user mode, such as 3 or 5. And in doing so, it loads network support. So let's just label this network support. So you boot your system into a multi-user mode. And the system knows, the operating system that is knows, to provide support for your networking interfaces. But how does it know that there is an ETH0 interface? Well, the kernel has to load a driver or a module which provides support for that Ethernet interface. There's a file in ETC known as modprobe.conf. If we examine the contents of this file, we see aliases for various devices connected to the machine. But in particular, we see the alias for ETH0. And if your system has more than one interface, such as ETH1, 2, and 3, you'll see the aliases in ETC modprobe.conf. Conf. So, etc modprobe.conf contains alias and reference to modular modules to be loaded in order to provide networking. Providing the module listed in the document or modprobe.conf loads successfully. In this case, it's the E100 module. It's assigned the alias ETH0. And that is where, when we execute ifconfig, ETH0 comes from. But ETH0 is an Ethernet interface which can be configured with a variety of protocols, such as IP version 4, version 6, among others. So the interface, in effect, has to be configured. Additionally, a determination needs to be made whether or not the interface is to be configured statically or dynamically. So with that said, once the module has been loaded, Linux decides if the interface is DHCP or static, or perhaps even boot P, but you're more likely to see DHCP and static interfaces. So either dynamic or static. This determination is made by the following file. If you navigate into etc system or sysconfig that is and examine the contents of this directory you'll see files controlling all aspects of the system from the keyboard to syslog, dhcpd, startup and the key directories that are of interest include networking and network-scripts. In network-scripts you will find, let's navigate into it, various scripts that support the invocation as well as devocation or downing of interfaces. So you'll find a series of if up and if down scripts as well as an interface configuration script for your loopback as well as Ethernet interface. So let's get this path and paste it into our documentation. So Linux decides if the interface is DHCP or static by viewing the contents of this directory and in the case of ETH0, the primary or first Ethernet interface, if config dash ETH0. In addition, another file is read, so let's indicate the list of files. We'll put this as second because it brings it up. In etc sysconfig, there's a network file. Let's take a look here, one level up. This network file is also consulted. If we cat the contents of it, 
you'll see that it includes that networking was to be enabled, whether or not IPv6 support is supposed to be enabled, the host name and the gateway assigned to the interface or to the system, the default gateway. So this is read for networking equals yes or no, IPv6 support, default gateway, amongst other settings. So once that's read and a yes has been determined for networking, the interface has to be brought up. It needs to be configured. And that leads us back to the network dash scripts directory. And in here we find different if up and if down scripts. So contains if up, if down, and if config scripts, of which you'll find if config eth0. Now, when is this if config eth0 consulted by the if up command? In this particular case, if up for the protocol that we intend to assign to the interface. Well, that's a good question. This if up script is consulted by the startup environment. What is the startup environment? Well, again, supposing we are boot booting into a multi-user level and the driver has loaded, Linux needs to decide whether or not networking is supported and whether or not static DHCP settings are to be assigned. But when the services are coming up, regardless of distribution, the following file is consulted, etc init.d network. This is the main service for networking, regardless of protocol to be assigned. So a brief look at etc init.d network reveals or provides a window into the environment that's defined when a system starts. It includes reference to the source function library, which provides support for notifying processes of networking support, amongst other things. Then it checks whether or not etc sysconfig network exists. That's the step we just mentioned. The network file is consulted to see whether or not networking support is to be enabled. So a check is made for this file. If it's found, then the contents of the file are incorporated into the overall network script startup. Another check is made for PCMCIA in the event that Red Hat Enterprise is installed on a laptop that makes use of a PCMCIA Ethernet interface adapter. If it doesn't exist, that's not a problem. The network script continues. If networking is equal to no, then in this particular case, it'll exit with a zero status and will not provide networking support. A search is made for the IP utility, which helps with assigning via the if up script IP addresses to the interface. If IPX is required, IPX internal net is also consulted, but that's not the case. If VLANs are configured, which is supported by the Linux kernel, then this utility is required, the vconfig utility. And then additional networking functions are sourced. An enumeration is made beneath network functions for different ifconfig utilities, or scripts that is, including ETH0. Now we see a case if we are in start mode, which the system is in when it's coming up, this case is executed. So we see if networking IPv6 is yes, which is derived from the original etc sysconfig network file, then the following init script is referenced to set up IPv6 support, which automatically contacts IPv6 providers, such as your default router, and configures IPv6. Again, if networking is yes, the loopback interface is brought up, and that's where if up is executed against the if config dash loopback adapter file. We can look at this remote system. The files are identical while we discuss the references that are being made here. So if networking is set to yes, if up ensures that the IPv6 script, the global script, is executed.
it also ensures that the loopback adapter is brought up. So if up processes the loopback adapter script, which contains, as expected, a reference to the device, its IP address, the net mask, which is set to 8 bits, the network, the fact that it is to be brought up on boot, its broad broadcast, and its name, which is loopback, which is where the name comes from in the execute if config. LO is equal to loopback with the address that you see here. The parameters that are set here are all configured in this if config loopback adapter file. And you see it. The mask, 8 bits. The address, dot 1. The device is loopback. Its name is loopback. So if up processes the items here and sets up this virtual, virtual loopback interface. Now back to our case where networking is set to yes. Now we see below a case for IPX which is nested within the case to start interface. If IPX support is to be assigned to the interface then the following IPX underscore configure will be configured and IPX support will be provided. If VLAN support is enabled then the VLAN utility will be referenced it's 8021Q and it will be configured. And if you keep searching through, you'll see the interfaces that are brought up. A search is made through if for the ifconfig files, which will eventually load support for ETH0. And that's what sets up the ETH0 environment. But enough of the nitty gritty. The flow is as follows you boot your system into multi user mode, meaning non single user, non shut, non reboot modes. ETCmodprobe.conf is referenced by the kernel to provide modular support for your network interface or interfaces. The operating system checks the ETC sysconfig network file to determine whether or not networking is to be supported, and it also needs to make the determination as to whether or not the address assignment will be handled automatically or statically, so dynamically or statically. Once that determination has been made by processing the network scripts if config interfaces file such as ETH0 and setting up a loopback adapter, the networking interface is available. Now once you're up and running, you can use service network status to determine the current status of networking. So this checks networking and tells you if it's running and you may also use service network status to restart as well as stop interfaces. This tells us the list of configured devices and the active devices. Loopback and ETH0. That's what you get when you execute service network status on the local as well as on the remote system. The service script is a wrapper script provided by Red Hat which references items in the etc init.d directory which return useful information depending on the option pass such as start, stop, restart, reload, status, and so on. So we know that networking is up and running, and if config tells us that the interface is up and running, but how do we go about making changes to the interface? Supposing we wanted to, let's say, add another IP address or two or three, or even just make general changes. Well, there are multiple tools. For example, system config network, and depending on the option or the version that you'd like, so we'll just indicate asterisk. We'll launch a GUI or text-based application which allows you to make changes to your networking interfaces.